Hey folks, Dan from SoftwareX here, and I'm gonna walk you through how you can create your first workflow to integrate your QuickBooks Online data with Smartsheet using our connector. If you have not already connected both platforms and logged into our app, go ahead and watch the how to get started video. I'll link that in the video description. It takes like 90 seconds to um, connect your, your account. And once you're there, you can get started creating your first workflow. So on that topic, let's talk about uh, creating a workflow. So first, what is a workflow? A workflow is a connection between an object in QuickBooks and a sheet in Smartsheet, along with all of the configuration settings that tell these two um, platforms how to communicate with each other and how to send data back and forth to each other. So with once you're in the SoftwareX application, um, come over here to the left-hand rail and hover over this plus icon to create your workflow. Once you click on that, there'll be some options here. So there are three templates we, ha we have right now. There's a profit and loss report, a customer management sheet, and a 2023 expense budgeting uh, template. This one's really cool because it comes with a sheet to integrate your purchases, a budget tracking sheet, reports and dashboards and metrics. Um, so that's a really great um, place to start if you kind of want to see, um, or, or it's a good, it's, templates are a good thing to select if you want a, a, a further along starting point. Uh, for today, we're gonna create from scratch so that I can talk through some of the options in a little bit more depth. Um, but it's all really, really easy to step through if you've created a sheet, if you're collaborating with other people in Smartsheet on creating sheets, you're technically advanced enough to go through this connector and uh, build a workflow from scratch. So let's click on create from scratch and we're going to advance through the four screens um, or through four screens here, settings, map fields, filters, and summary. Um, in the settings screen, first thing we want to do is choose a sheet that we're going to integrate QuickBooks online data to. So you can scroll through your workspaces, pick out a sheet that you want to connect. I've been doing some testing and here's some sheets I have. But what's kind of nice is if you have not already started the sheet and you're wanting to synchronize data, you can create a new sheet from this app. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click new sheet. Let's call this, um, let's see, first connection invoices. Not super creative, but we'll go with it. Uh, so that's the name of the sheet, or that's what the sheet will get named once it's created. QuickBooks account. So this is the account, uh, my QuickBooks account uh, that I had previously connected. And that's the one that shows up here in the manage QuickBooks account screen. Obviously that's the first step. Again, go back and watch that video if you have not already connected. Workflow type. So in this workflow type dropdown list, you're gonna see um, a listing of all of the different QuickBooks objects that are available right now to configure within our connector. So you'll see, I won't list everything off, but um, let me head that. You'll, you have quite a, quite a few options of a, quite, a, quite a high volume of data set um, to integrate with. If you are a QuickBooks Online user and you, you're not seeing what you want integrated here, please reach out to us. We could look at potentially adding that object type into our connector. Um, so for today, for example purposes, I'm gonna integrate invoices I'm gonna schedule this um, to run manually um, just because it's only gonna get used for this demo. Uh, but you also have the option to configure things to run kind of immediately as updates are made either in Smartsheet or QuickBooks or on a frequency hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. Go ahead and hit next. Okay, so next screen here, map fields. So map QuickBooks data to Smartsheet columns. Um, I'm going to call your attention to these two buttons here because this is going to be the best place to start when you're creating a new sheet from um, from the connector, which is what we're doing in this scenario. So first, um, we want to select Quick Map All Fields, and then we have the option to either push to Smartsheet. So that's saying, hey, connector, take all the data that's in QuickBooks, send that over to Smartsheet. Or you can choose Sync Values, and that will synchronize data back and forth by directionally, whether it's getting entered in one platform or another. 
Um, so as I scroll down here, I'm gonna skip general mappings. I'll come back up to that, but let's look at like invoice. When I selected those, those options, the uh, fields populated with all of the fields that are available in QuickBooks on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, this is what the columns would get named to correspond to that field in QuickBooks. So things like customer ID, for example, that could flow bi-directionally if that gets updated. Currency ID, document number, billing email, so on and so forth. And so let's say customer ID, we don't want that changed in Smartsheet. That should originate in QuickBooks. We can update that so that it is pushed from QuickBooks to Smartsheet. And so not all fields actually have a bi-directional um, capability. Uh, and this is just due to the QuickBooks Online API and how a data can flow to those fields. And those will, you can, you can tell which ones those are because they don't have this little drop down triangle like customer name, for example, that cannot uh, flow bi directionally from Smartsheet at this time. Um, what's really cool about this quick map too is it's building our sheet for us. So we didn't have to go into Smartsheet audit all the columns or the fields in QuickBooks that we'd want to integrate and then build a sheet with those columns, it's going to add the columns for us. In fact, it'll actually add, um, it'll up update the column type and it'll actually add column descriptions based on what um, QuickBooks says that, that, um, that field is. And this is a lot of data and you might not want all this. So maybe like the bill email CC is not something that we care about. So we can remove those. So rather than just kind of starting building out things one by one, highly recommend when you're creating a new sheet push using the push to smart sheet or sync all values to start. And then um, let's come back here to general mappings. So ID is a required field. This will tell us basically, you know, what is a unique identifier for that specific um, row in smart sheet or value in QuickBooks. And then um, sync errors will tell us for a given row, is there a issue with synchronizing the data either way? And what QuickBooks tells us the error would be, that would actually show up in our, um, in our sheet, which is really nice. So these are general mappings, not specific fields in the, in the QuickBooks UI, but ones that are needed to make sure the um, integration functions and we can troubleshoot when needed. Um, quick map existing columns. So in this instance, we don't have a sheet created. We don't have columns to, to use here. We're creating a net new sheet, remember? But if we were gonna start actually saying, hey, let's, instead of here saying, I want to connect to an existing sheet in map fields, when I would do, if I were to select um, either push to smart sheet or sync values, it would look at the columns available in the smart sheet match those up to the fields they match in QuickBooks if you kind of work that direction and then it would sync it that way. So what's kind of nice is, you know, whether you're starting or originating from your fields in QuickBooks or you have a sheet to start with, there's a there's a, a way to easily map those. So let's talk about this setting here. How would you like to structure your sheet in Smartsheet? There's a couple options, map summary data, map detailed data. Let me just make sure I am using this quick map all fields, push to Smartsheet. Um, so I have it set up right now to send data from QuickBooks to Smartsheet. And then if I have this option selected, your sheet will be flat. It's gonna be one row per invoice. With this option here, I need to re-push to Smartsheet. This is going to change a few things. So any underlying items that would be associated with an invoice would now get pushed to Smartsheet and represented in hierarchy in the sheet. So it wouldn't be a flat sheet, there would be hierarchy with parent and child rows. The row type here essentially tells us um, what type of data is that. For example, as you see here, invoice workflow may contain invoice rows, line item rows, total rows, etc. So when I scroll down, we'll see here these fields are nested under this invoice um, header. These, the link transaction, sales item, item line, group line, description only line, discount line, and these associated fields are relevant to that specific line item that would get nested under an invoice. So it's a, there's a lot of functionality here, a lot of data. I'm just going to keep it simple for us today and keep it one row per invoice, and we can take a look at that. Um, so 
once that's selected, I will come back down, you know, audit the columns and the field mapping. We had the connector do it for us, and then I'll hit next. <clears throat> next screen here, filters. So filters do exactly that. There's two areas we can do, we can configure filters. The first is within Smartsheet, do we want to filter data, the data flow based on um, new rows getting into Smartsheet, getting entered in Smartsheet, and then getting uploaded into QuickBooks Online? Um, and the ones that would continuously get updated, which which rows would those be? So once the sheet's created, we can actually come back into the connector, uh, or we'll say once the sheet's created, we would configure that filter and then come back in the connector and then tell the connector to look at a specific filter in the sheet. Because we're creating a new sheet, we can't use that setting right now. What we can apply is QuickBooks filters. So if we want to filter the data that should come from QuickBooks online to a specific sheet, you can actually filter, let's say, let's only pull in filters um, or invoices that have a total amount uh, greater than 100 or, uh, or we'll say greater than 100 total amount. Uh, smaller or equal to 200,000, just, just for fun here, just making stuff up. So these are two and filters, and then you could also add an or, like let's say we only care about invoices that are within that range that were um, created uh, within the last two years. So we'll say greater than, and we'll follow this format here, so 2022. Dash zero one dash zero one. <clears throat> All right. So filters and then summary screen. So last thing here, let's name our workflow. Let's do invoices. Um, I like to name it actually after the sheet. So I'm going to do that. First connection invoices. Uh, workflow type is an invoice, smart sheet filter, none, QuickBooks filters, there's two, schedule manually for right now, mapping, so there's one row type, 84 total fields mapped, 84 columns would get would be integrated. And then lastly, we're telling it um, how to behave, so in terms of the data flow. So do we want to push new rows from Smartsheet into QuickBooks Online? Right now, I have everything pushed into Smartsheet, so even if I toggled this on, data wouldn't flow that way. But if we had data synchronizing and getting con going flowing bidirectionally in that field mapping screen, we'd want to turn this on if we want new rows from Smartsheet to also get uploaded in QuickBooks Online. This one here, delete missing rows from Smartsheet. So if there's a transaction in QuickBooks Online that was potentially entered in error and it gets deleted in QuickBooks Online, but it had already been added in Smartsheet, what do we want to do with that row? Right now, if I didn't toggle this on, it would stay in Smartsheet. Um, but I want you know my data in Smartsheet to match QuickBooks online, so I'm going to toggle that on so that the invoices in Smartsheet match QuickBooks. All right, so moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and create the workflow. And so what the connector is doing now is it's going to create the sheet. So I'll open the sheet here. <clears throat> And then you can see it's named First Connection Invoices. Uh, today is February 8th, 334. You can see the sheet was created just now. And then we have all those lovely columns ready to get data entered in them. So you'll see here like customer ID, there's a column description. I didn't create the sheet. It was created that way for me by the connector, which is really nice. Of course, all, this, all of this can get updated, column name, column description. You can re readjust the columns. What I'm going to do now is run the workflow. And then let's come back here and see what shows up. So we should see some data start populating in here. I'll give it a minute. <clears throat> there we go. So this um, data is coming from a sandbox QuickBooks online account that I have. And we're seeing, you know, we got we got an ID right here. We have customer name, 
there's a hyperlink here so I can go back into QuickBooks and I, as I scroll to the right, I'll see information entered. Um, and it would, it would continuously update based on that um, frequency that we tell the connector to update it. And from that point, you're set. Um, I can come back into the connector, view all workflows. And then as, as that workflow runs, I can come in here and see, hey, first connection invoices, when was the last run? I can view and access logs. I can run it again. I can come in here and edit the frequency so I can come back into the settings page and set it to run hourly. You know, um, from this point forward, uh, we can adjust some settings, you know, based on what we're seeing and <clears throat> get that data from QuickBooks Online in the Smartsheet. And that's how you create your first workflow.